Hi there, this is Waves Lesson 1. Title, Waves Properties 1. Objectives. Explain the differences between transverse and longitudinal waves. To recall basic wave properties. And to calculate the time period of waves. Let's make a start. So what is a wave? A wave is a means of transferring energy and information from one point to another without there being any transfer of matter between the two points. So now to write that down. All right, let's move on. Remember to pause at any point if you need to. So what's a transverse wave? The skip's pretty good. Um, at school, you may, your teacher may have used a, a slinky to demonstrate this, or you may have seen a video online. So the particle motion in this instance is going vertically, up and down, and the propagation of the energy is perpendicular to that. The skiff calls it energy transport. But essentially the, the motion of the you know the the medium, so to speak, medium just means substance, so in this case a slinky, is perpendicular to the direction in which the energy moves. So transverse waves are waves where the direction of vibrations is at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. An example is a water wave. If you get a stone and throw it in water, the stone will displace the water vertically downwards, but the propagation of energy will go perpendicular across the surface of the water. Okay, if you need to make any notes, remember to pause. Let's move on. So about a longitudinal wave. So in a longitudinal wave, the particle motion and the energy propagation or the energy transport are in the same direction or they are parallel to each other. So when the wave uh, compresses, you know, as it moves along, that region is called compression. So like that region, I try to grab really quickly. Let me see if I can pause it. No, that blatantly doesn't work. Anyway, that bit's compression. There we go again. The region behind it is known as rarefaction. So you've got compression of the sound wave, and then behind it, you've got a region which is less dense. It's called rarefaction. Okay. So longitudinal waves are waves where the vibrations of the particles are along the direction in which the wave travels. So you've got regions of compression, you've got rarefaction, where the you know it's become more stretched out rather than compressed. And the particle motion is parallel. So the key word for the transverse waves is perpendicular, the key word for the longitudinal waves is, is parallel. So particle motion parallel to energy transport. Okay, and an example is sound waves. All right, let's move on to describing waves. So amplitude is the maximum movement or maximum displacement of the particles that make up a wave from their rest position. So if this is a wave, that's the rest position or the equilibrium position. Equilibrium position. So that's the amplitude. The amplitude is not the full thing. So it's not from the center, well, from the bottom to the top. That's a common mistake. Sometimes you're asked to label these up in an exam. So the amplitude is the height uh, of a crest, crest being the top ones, or the depth of a trough, the trough being the bottom region. So amplitude is from the equal, equilibrium position to the maximum displacement. Okay, let's move on. So what about wavelength? So wavelength is the distance between one wave peak and the next wave peak along the path of a wave. Wavelength is measured in meters. So that'd be wavelength from peak all the way down to the bottom and all the way back to the starting position. That is the length of one wave. Or we could go from here all the way up and all the way back down to where we started. That's another wave, the length of the wave. Another one, we could go from the equilibrium position all the way down and back up to the top. That's a wave. 
So, how many waves are in this image, do you think? You just want to write a number down. See if we get this right. Well, there's four full waves, and then, so you've got, this is one full wave. The next one is a full wave. This one. Then this one. And then we've got a quarter of a wave. So that's four and a quarter wavelengths. Hopefully got that right. All right, so we've done amplitude and wavelength. What about frequency? So frequency is the number of wave peaks that pass a point in one second, or the amount of waves that are produced per second. So if you had a speaker producing a certain number of waves, you know, if they produced 10,000 waves per second, that would be a frequency of 10,000 hertz. Uh, frequencies can get quite large, so you might see them as, you know, kilohertz or megahertz, or even gigahertz. So kilo means a thousand, mega means one million, and giga means one billion. But one hertz basically means one wave per second. Two hertz means two wave per second, uh, and so on. All right, let's move on. So the next thing is time period. So time period is the time taken for a source to produce one wave. And there's an equation for this one, and it's time period is equal to 1 divided by the frequency. Or capital T for time period is equal to 1 divided by F. And if you want to try, you can pause the video and try and rearrange to find frequency. And then I'll put the answer on. So it'd be frequency is equal to 1 divided by the time period. Now, if you're not sure how to do that, if you've got t is equal to 1 divided by f, what you need to do is multiply by f on both sides. So that takes the f up. So you end up with t times f equals 1. And then we need to get frequency on its own. So we need to get rid of the times by t. So we need to divide by t on the right-hand side. That's where the frequency is equal to 1 divided by t comes from. And if you really don't understand that, I suppose what you could do is a little bit of a math trick, although mathematicians wouldn't like this, is a sneaky swap. And so if it looks like this on the left, you just swap the F and the T around. Okay. All right, let's do some practice questions to finish. Now it's calculate the frequency of a wave of time period 8 seconds. So you want to pause and have a go at that. And let's go through the answer now. So frequency is 1 over the time period, so it's simply 1 divided by 8, which gives a frequency of 0 0.125 hertz. If you've written 0 .1, uh, 0 0.13 hertz, that's completely fine. All right, let's try another one. So this time, calculate the time period of a wave of frequency 50 hertz. So to pause and have a go, and I'll take you through the answer now. So its time period is 1 over f, so it's simply 1 divided by 50 which gives the time period of 0 0.02 seconds. Let's do one more. So this time we need to calculate the frequency of a wave of time period 120 ms. So this time the, the, the 120 ms is in milliseconds. So you've got milli means divided by 1000. So you need to do 120 divided by 1000 to start with. So that gives us 0 0.12 seconds. Then to get the frequency, we need to do frequency is 1 divided by the time period. So that would simply be 1 divided by 0 0.12 seconds. And that gives us a frequency of 8.3 hertz. Hopefully you weren't caught out by the, the milliseconds. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's the wave basics and you know, there's some important things in there so thanks for watching and i'll, I'll speak to you at the next one